to the Lowdown Podcast, your home for the untold stories of sports presented by Lojo Media. We're here live in Los Angeles. And as you know, you can follow the podcast at the Lowdown Podcast on all social media platforms, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and you can follow us on YouTube. If you catch any, if you've missed any parts of the show, you can find us on YouTube, youtube.com slash Lojo Media. So before I introduce my amazing guest today, very excited, we have Women in Sports Roundtable Part 1. I would like to announce that the new and improved LojoMedia.com will be live this Saturday, April 7th. You can check out all the new content that I have, sports interviews, stories. It is your home for the untold stories of sports. So LojoMedia.com will be live this weekend. You guys should check it out. Subscribe. And also, I celebrated my birthday this past Monday, so it will be a joint celebration. Uh, This Saturday, I'm having a launch party to celebrate both LojoMedia.com's new unveiling and also my birthday. Without further ado, I want to introduce my first guest, She's known as your favorite NBA player's favorite photographer. She is one of the most amazing photographers in the sports business, self-made. And, you know, last week, I believe, or maybe a couple weeks ago, she was on ESPN's The Jump. She's been seen all over with your favorite NBA players. Everybody from Steph Curry, LeBron James, Dwayne Wade, the list goes on. Kevin Durant, James Harden, they're all calling her for exclusive videos and and, of course, photos. If you haven't had a Cassie Athena watermark, you haven't made it, pretty much. So, without further ado, I'd like to introduce Miss Cassie Athena. Welcome to the show. Hey, thanks for having me. Happy to be here. Of course, of course. And I'm all actually live on Instagram oh, wow. right now, too. So, <laughs> our second guest is none other than Stephanie Mejia. She's normally behind the scenes of every basketball sporting event that you probably have ever seen. And she's normally seen and not heard. She stands at all of five feet, and I'm giving that her, to five her one, <laughs> generously. <laughs> but she makes all those basketball tournaments and events happen. She's marketing, branding, and player relations all wrapped up into one. Welcome to the show, oh, Stephanie. Thank you. And thank also you. my my fellow Trojan, of course, so fight on. Fight on. <laughs> uh, unfortunately, Denise White couldn't be with us today as a CEO. Obviously, there's always something that comes up, and she had a client to tend to. But I'm so excited to have these ladies on the panel with me. And uh, I'm going to start with this. How would you describe what you do? And I'll start with Cassie. Um, I mean, I do. I feel like people say that I'm a photographer, but that's just kind of like my you know, very small thing of what I can do. It's like everything. You have to be good at networking with people. You have to be good at building relationships, um, being friendly with people, working hard, doing a little bit of everything. So I would say I'm a little bit of all of that. Plus, I know how to take pictures and videos. So photographer slash entrepreneur. I don't right. know. All yes, of the above. absolutely. <laughs> yeah. And what about you, Stephanie? I know it's probably a little bit harder to kind of describe what yeah. you do. But but if you could give us a little scenario, like what do you I'm looking do? right here, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, go ahead. Um, no, well, I, um, brand marketing. So I work at Jordan Brand. Mm-hmm. Um so that encompasses uh, everything that connects the consumer with our brand, specifically our product. Mm-hmm. Um, so I work with everything west of Texas for the brand. That's a huge region. It's fun. Yes. <laughs> That's cool. awesome. So if we could take a snapshot into a week in the life of one of you guys, what would that snapshot look like? Uh, I feel like every day is different, and um, you know, and Stephanie, Stephanie and I work a lot together too. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I might be saying, sitting at home one day editing, and then she calls me and says, you "Come to this tournament tomorrow," <laughs> and I just go. So, you know, it's kind of hard to say, but for the most part, for me, there's a lot of uh, you know going to basketball games because that's my world, mm-hmm. and I want to network. So whether I'm there to network or there to work, I'm gonna go no matter what because I feel like it's, you know, either. Either if I'm working or I'm just networking, it's just all kind of in one. And then sit at home editing a lot. You know, a lot of people think I just hang around NBA stars all day, but there's a lot of sitting at home with my cat editing, you know. So it's a little bit mixture of, you know, the star life and a lot of hard work behind the scenes. And what about you, Steph? What does a snapshot of your kind of week look same, like? Well, same to her point. Like, I think there was an event on 125 where... 
Oh, I'm still confused by that too. <laughs> but um, where I was, I, I legit probably text you with, with two hours. My mind was going <laughs> yeah. a lot. I didn't even give you much context. I just said, come. Yeah. I remember you were like, oh. I, I just brought a camera. camera. Yeah. yeah. I didn't so know. it varies every day. Like um, each day is different, which is probably the beauty of it. Absolutely. No day is the same. So, yeah. I can definitely say the same, especially since I've like segued into this like entrepreneur freelance lifestyle. It's like <laughs> every day it really just changes. Um, so, can you guys kind of tell me where you got your start in sports and like where your love of basketball came from? Um, for me, I mean, I played a little bit of volleyball and basketball when I was in high school and mm-hmm. college. And I just always would have fun taking pictures. So for me, it was more of a hobby. I just enjoyed shooting and um, getting to know it. And then for me, like my big turning point was during the 2011 lockout. And a lot of people know I started off like mainly shooting the Drew League. And, you know, I was the first person to shoot down there. And that kind of branched into just networking with other players and realizing players are brands as well. They're not just athletes. So I kind of got into just helping build people's brands. And that's sort of how I jumped into it. It kind of just, it was a hobby and it turned into a career. Yeah. <laughs> what about you? Um, my question is kind of just where you got your start oh. in sports and, and where your love of the um, game came from. It's probably well, the love of the game came from my brother. Mm-hmm. So I have an older brother. He's eight years older than me. Um, so and I still remember my first uh, NBA game. It was a Clipper game. So it's why I'm a Darius Miles fan. <laughs> um, and I always wanted to be in sports, but I, I, like at USC, I studied science. Mm-hmm. So I thought I wanted to be in sports medicine. And there was um, an internship in 08 that took me to Beijing that completely just, I could never pinpoint to this day what it was, but that experience kind of altered what I wanted to do. So I mm-hmm. still knew I wanted to be within sports. But um, what, I, I had to figure that out. And it was like my senior year. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> I, I feel you because when I was in college at USC, similarly, I was majoring in broadcast and I was minoring in sports media, but I really didn't know if I wanted to go more into like the sports business side of things, like the agency, or if I wanted to go more into like journalism. And I always flirted with the idea of journalism, but it wasn't until I got to the Drew League in like 2012 that I was like, hmm. Maybe I could, you know, pursue this and why not do it while you're young, you know, and maybe circle back to the whole sports management. And that's why I really wanted to have Denise on here to kind of speak to that. She transitioned from, you know, broadcasting to, you know, the more sports management side of things. But it's 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 sports is such a broad thing. Mm -hmm. And kind of like what you talked about before, Cassie, is that you know, we kind of have to do a little bit of everything. So even though I'm a reporter, I'm still also a videographer when I have to be or yeah. an editor when I have to be or a photographer even if I have to be, you know, social media expert, you know, yeah. and there's all these, like, ideas about... But you brought up an interesting point that I wanted to kind of elaborate on, and that's, you know, that athletes are brands. Mm -hmm. And we're seeing a lot more branded content, you Mm -hmm. know, for athletes. And I kind of wanted to speak to you, Stephanie, a little bit more about, you know, where you think the direction of, you know, the athlete as the brand is going um, in terms of, like, you know, sports marketing. I think there's – I think – younger players more younger are starting to realize that they're a brand like they're a walking brand at the end of the day Mm -hmm. just as much as like cassie as you are like and i think they're starting to understand that so good point is like they want cassie's images why because of the quality they want to start branding what they're playing and i was at this tournament this camp but it starts such a at a young age like at high school they're so eager to start branding themselves and i think when it gets to the pros like more athletes are, instead of waiting for that second or third check, which is usually when they start to grasp it, mm-hmm. they're starting to grasp it younger. And yeah. they're understanding, like, what they do off the court can definitely, you know, there's a payback with it. Absolutely. And so they're learning to even how to carry themselves at all times in a high level. It's so crazy because I had um, a couple of high school basketball players last episode. It was like Josh and Caleb Christopher who they love you uh, and praise and adore you and I'm sure they've played in a couple Jordan tournaments before and they, you know, had this whole social media following like, you know, I'm like, how do you have this many followers? You're 16, you know? But it's crazy that that's the trend of sports and that they have so much responsibility at such a young age. Similarly, we as women in sports have that same kind of level of responsibility in how we carry ourselves. I kind of want to segue into that. You know, do you guys, have you guys experienced any double standards with, you know, how you approach, you know, 
players or, you know, just how you develop those relationships when you're first starting out? Um, I mean, totally. I feel like in any field, there's going to be a lot of double standard stuff. But um, in sports, I mean, I've noticed just as being a female photographer, there's really not many of them. So a lot of people just aren't used to it. Mm -hmm. And um, I think there's just been in the past, like a lot of negative stereotypes about certain females that hang around athletes. And now things have been turning and people have more of a respect for just seeing that women are just as hardworking and smart and not everybody's out here with an ulterior motive. Like, people mm -hmm. just want to help build your brand. So it's definitely a lot of, you know, being careful as yourself as a brand and you just approach people the right way. You make friends with their, their whole team, not just them. And um, But I definitely see a lot of guy photographers who get a little more access than I do to certain things. And, and that's okay because now that was at first. Now I've kind of built my reputation up where I get more access than, you know, anybody. But... Uh, it definitely took years to do it. It's not something overnight. Um, but the other great thing is now there's so many more other women in sports who are building each other up. I remember I met Stephanie like years ago and there's a lot of, you know, I met you and there's a lot of other women that specifically are more around like Southern California that all just kind of stick together, but are all very influential and powerful and helping, you know, players from high school age to college, NBA. So it's kind of nice to have like a group of other women to lean on and, and understand what you go through. But for the most part, I wouldn't complain about being a female. I think it's cool. You kind of stand out, too. So there's a lot of advantages to it as well. So Definitely. I think you have to just figure out how to use it for your power, you yep. know. And, and yeah, that yeah. Fem femininity is I his like power. I said everything I probably would. <laughs> yeah. I mean, <laughs> I think a key thing is obviously there is the stereotype, the double standard. Um, obviously, like to her point, it takes time to be able to get the access that someone may get. It took, you know... Um, but I do think, like, if you focus on the positives and focus on the fact of, to her point, as a woman, you do stand out, like, what the return you get is going to be better because if you focus on the positive energy, you're going to get that same energy back within due time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I'm not personally dating right now, but <laughs> I have to ask oh, you no. guys about this whole, because, you know, as women in sports, we often get, like you said, like this, like, do you, I know athletes are hitting on you. And I'm like, well, of course. No, just kidding. But uh, no, I'm, I'm totally kidding. But, you know, this whole idea of, like, where where do you date? You know, who do you right. date? And, like, you know, you're around millionaires most of the time. And then it's, like, you know, regular Joe Schmo. Like, how is he going to approach you? But, like, how do you guys approach dating? Has that been a struggle for you as, you know, a successful woman in sports? And, like, you know, do you want a family? Like, is that something that you're, you know, looking forward to? Or, you know, like. Where does dating fit into just the, like the success? Um, I'm probably the most private person. I've been <laughs> yes. like, so like, yes, like, yes. <laughs> um, I I personally don't date within um, my workspace. So anything basketball related, I've actually steered clear from. Mm -hmm. um, but that's a personal choice. Like there's definitely many women who, you know, it's. Wherever you find that person for you, right. whatever works for you, me personally, I've actually steered clear from that. But I think there is a balance you can't find. Definitely. <laughs> and do you want a family one day? Is that something that you're... Maybe in like a few years. Maybe a few years. Okay, okay. We'll have days. you back on this same podcast <laughs> and we'll run back the tape. Like, ask her in a few years. <laughs> yeah. What about you, Cassie? Um, I feel like it's a very interesting question, but... I mean, <laughs> the good thing is, like, there's so many women just around. Like, they're not really worried if we want to date them or not. So there's right. not really pressure from, like, athletes trying to talk to us. So, um, And I feel like when you reach a certain level of respect, people aren't really looking to mm -hmm. talk to you in that way. Anyway, mm -hmm. they'd rather build their brand with mm -hmm. us than anything. So mm -hmm. um, as far as dating, like, I try not to date in that world, too. But as far as dating just, like, a quote-unquote, like, regular person, sometimes they're intimidated by the fact that I do hang around a bunch of famous NBA millionaire so it's kind of like frustrating either way but it's not something I'm like focused on my family's from eastern Europe so like at 19 you gotta start like getting married so I'm like a little <laughs> bit on the older side so my mom's like you know when you're getting married so um, I have a lot of pressure from like my family back home but it's all love and they know I'm trying to build my brand and and do something that's never been done so that just all comes like whenever God is ready for me to do what I need to do then I'll be ready so. yeah I had to check it up to that too because I'm like it's just not working <laughs> right now much. This is too much. It comes like, all at the right time. Yeah, so. I think so, too. So speaking of, you know, how do you set those kind of boundaries? Or do you, like, how do those relationships come 
like in terms of just friendships with guys, you know, how do the because I know you guys are always seen <laughs> courtside with so and so and such and such. Like, how do these relationships come about? You know, and I think it's organic. Like, she can probably speak to it as well. Like, you you're yourself. I don't think. I mean, I mean personally, yes, they're basketball players. I don't see them as such. Mm-hmm. I see them as people. Right. So. I don't really focus on, oh, my gosh, it's, I don't know, whomever. Right. Like, it's just not my concern. So I'm just myself. And I, I think um, that's usually how that develops. And then it's part of, like, being a woman, like, around them. Um, I think probably when I was younger, I, I feel like I was more like a big sister. Mm-hmm. Now that I'm a little older, I feel like I'm, like, I don't know, like a... Like I had big act- sister, yeah, please. I played somebody's mom the other day, just and I was not his mom <laughs> for Josh. <laughs> so, I was his mom for one day. I was just like, mm, you could actually pass for my kid now. Right. But I think it's just that organic, natural relationship. You just treat them as such, like they're people, just like anyone. Yeah, and have their highs and their lows. And what would be your advice for young women aspiring to be in the sports industry? I would say you have to get into it for the right reasons. Like, you have to really want to be here to make it a better industry, to make the people better. If, you know, if you're trying... I've seen people leave comments like, oh, I'm going to go be a photographer so I can find a boyfriend. Like, that's... First of all, nobody wants to get your pictures because you want to date them. Like, you have to be talented and respected. And same with marketing and all that stuff. Like, they people... They're around so many different people. They can tell if you're being genuine or not. And I think that's... Especially, like, Stephanie and I, that's why we build so many friendships with players is Mm -hmm. because like she said like we just treat them as who they are they're just normal people and of course sometimes you take a step back and you're like wow that's kind of cool like I'm you know hanging around this person but at the end of the day you want to build that relationship you don't want to try to take selfies and be starstruck and all that you just treat them as a normal person and then they respect that and yeah I would just say like to just just follow what you're passionate about and don't have ulterior motives because in any industry yeah I mean, people think that working in sports is all glamorous, but you both have, you know, endured some very trying and adverse times. You know, you're a brain tumor survivor. You know, your mom suffers from lupus, and these are all things that you guys have been very, you know, vocal about in terms of getting involved in those, you know, communities. So how would you say that those life's challenges have have shaped you? They make you more than anything like whether it's something like that's really tough yes dealing with that or um with my mom's health they just make you i don't think it's something you should worry about or stress on or weigh on it's gonna make you better and it's gonna develop that in all honesty sports is especially for women it's you gotta have tough skin yes there's no room for for not that (laughs) and i think situations that are trying they make you better they teach you how to react. Yes. So what about for you, Cassie? Yeah, I mean, being successful in anything you do is never a straight path. Like, that's what makes you better is learning how to deal with adversity and all that. And um, I don't remember, like, the original question. But well, just, like, you know, how have life's challenges made oh, okay. you, you know? Yeah, you I mean, you? it's definitely, like, life is all about, like, problem solving. And so... Now, you know, sometimes I used to I used to get really frustrated when I deal with adversity or haters or whatever. And now I've just learned to sort of embrace it because it means that, you know, if people are really trying to go against you or trying to stop you, maybe you're doing something right because you're doing something different, Mm -hmm. something that's never been done. And, you know, even like just in general, like I was talking to someone the other day, it's like people who break the rules. That's how you get somewhere different, Mm -hmm. you know, and so you do something different and um I, I just feel like you have to just love what you do and, and know that good and bad kind of weigh each other out. And you just can't focus on the bad when it's happening. You have to focus on tomorrow and the good and just know that it's all you're, you're where you're meant to be. Everything happens for a reason. Yeah, I think uh, that qu- it reminds me of this quote that, you know, well-behaved women seldom make history. I <laughs> yes. mean, that is true. That's true. It's really true. So I want to lighten it up and ask you, what's the best sporting event or experience that you've had? Because, I mean, you're filming Steph Curry's, ba- you know, 30th birthdays, and you're going to Jordan parties. And so, like, what's the best, <laughs> you know, sporting event or experience that you guys have both had? Worked on or just been at? Either way. Olympics. The Oli- which which Olympics did you go to? Uh, I went to a few. Okay. Oh wait. And <laughs> oh. I think if anyone, if you can go, 
go. What was it about that experience that just sticks you out to you? You could go to like a, a basketball game, a football game, and it's like obviously passionate people mm -hmm. and they're going for whichever team. When it comes to Olympics, it's like heart, it's culture, it's just, it's such a beautiful thing. Mm -hmm. Like you see people from all walks of life, all different countries in one place for one moment. Like where it's, it's, it's just pretty dope. Everyone should experience. Sounds like one. really powerful. I'm like goals. <laughs> you should get it's to an Olympics. Pretty dope. Yep. What about for you? Um, for me, I don't know. It'd be difficult. I feel like everything that I shoot and, and I'm a part of is special in its own way. Mm -hmm. Like. I haven't shot an Olympics yet, so maybe that would be my next goal. Um, Hoping it comes here. Yeah. Yes. Like, yeah. yeah. Um, I've done, I've done like, a lot of Team USAs, like, when they've practiced in, in America. Like, that was pretty cool, just seeing so many superstars. Um, I got to go to Serbia for one of my cousin's weddings, and uh, Quincy Miller was playing on a big team out there called mm -hmm. Red Star, and he took me to my first EuroLeague game. I watched I've, that video. Yeah. It was Insane. wild. I've never seen fans throwing stuff and smoking <laughs> in arenas and singing songs <laughs> and waving flags. So um, definitely just seeing international basketball was pretty cool, but... Of course, all the, like, All-Star Weekend, L.A., yes. New Orleans, New York. Like, that stuff is amazing, so. Well, if we can get any sponsors that are watching to send us all <laughs> international to go to some of those yes. games, I would love that. Of course. Um, okay, well, that's also a very good segue because I feel like there's a lot of uh, this new international, uh, you know, like a lot of guys are going to play overseas and such. Mm -hmm. And so how does that fit into kind of what you guys do at Jordan, if, if at all? doesn't i mean we tend to have a international game mm -hmm. at jbc in order to get a pulse of the younger kids that are overseas because mm -hmm. there is a lot of talent over the water but it doesn't actually technically play a part um not for the high school kids specifically okay but college kids do you guys think that that you know I think it was LeVar Ball who brought it up, and he's like a polarizing figure in sports. But but this whole idea of more players going towards, you know, just straight pro, what are you guys' thoughts on that? Because that was at one time a thing, you know? I mean, right. LeBron James of the world, the Kobe yeah. Bryants, like, that was a thing. So what are your thoughts on... There's a kid uh, from Syracuse, uh, or he was com he's committed to Syracuse, mm -hmm. who just decommitted because he's going to go to the G League. Right. The NBA is definitely trying to, like, help kids stay home as opposed to feeling the need to go overseas to not do the college and then just prepare over there. Right. I think it depends on each person. It's, like, whatever works for you. Um, there's been kids who have gone and their families have been able to support them through that process and be there with them so they're not homesick, per se. Mm -hmm. And it's worked out great for them. Um, Ferguson's like a perfect example of that. Like, no one, I can't say too many people supported that. Right. But he did it. His mom was there every step of the way. And he plays for OKC now and is doing well. So it's definitely, and uh, Moody is same. Bo, Brandon like, Jennings. Yeah. yeah. Like, it's mm -hmm. definitely something that could work, but I think it, it's dependent on if it works for that specific kid in that family. Just as much as I'm sure this kid wanted a, the kid from, I believe it's Darius, wanted to stay home to play at the G League and so and work his way up that way. Right. I think it's a I hope that they restructure the G League's contract so that it's mm -hmm. more uh you know physically I'm sorry not physically fiscally rather viable medium yeah. for players but yeah. I definitely think that that it's designed to be that you know the feeder system to the NBA and I feel like guys if you want to get the college experience one year might do it for you and you you know get the opportunity to go pro but I feel like most times in that one year half the season or half the year you're traveling you know because yep. of the season so it's not really getting that experience I feel like there should be some kind of structure where they can commit to a place, play in their careers, and then come back and get their education. That's what I would propose right. to the NBA if you're listening. You know? <laughs> <laughs> but, um, you know, we only have time for a little bit more. And unfortunately, I mean, this has been amazing. <laughs> I love you guys so much. And I'm so happy that you were able to make it. Uh, I know that there were some struggles getting here, but <laughs> I'm going to go into this week's Shot Caller of the Week. And uh, as we get up that graphic... Obviously, this yeah. young lady killed it. Buzzer beaters for both of the championship games. Yep. You know, Notre Dame knocking off this powerhouse in UConn. Arike 
I'm going to butcher her last name, so I'm just going to go with that. But she's our shot caller of this week. And, you know, shout out to her for killing it and representing for women's basketball. That was just two amazing games. I don't know if you guys caught those games, but it was like... It was fire. Really? I mean... It was like, yo. Right. They were talking about it on NBA Countdown as an NBA game was going on. Like, Beetle kept throwing it to, like, if you're not watching on ESPN2, because we are in studio. Like, you know... UConn hadn't lost in some time. Long, they were the dynasty. They yeah. were the Kentucky, if you will. So it was. I think they're way past a Kentucky. Yeah, they're, yeah, they're, seriously. It, just, it, it was that. That was real. Wow, yeah, so I'm dethroning, you know, yeah, UConn and then her having those amazing games. Like, shout out to you, girl. You'll be <laughs> on that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and then this week's uh, hashtag facts, we're bringing it back, is uh, Miss Jane Kennedy. In 1978, Jane Kennedy became one of the first women to enter the sports casting arena. She joined the cast of NFL Today as a studio analyst and really changed the trajectory of women as sportscasters. So she's gorgeous. I went to school with uh, some of her kids at USC and shout out to her. We're going to have her on the podcast, hopefully for the Women in Sports Roundtable Part 2. So stay tuned (laughs) for that, guys. That will do it for today's show. I'm your host again, Lauren A. Jones. You can follow me at Lojo Media on all social platforms. And also check out lojomedia.com the new unveiling this Saturday it will be released and you guys will get to see all the new content that I've been working on thank you so much to my special guests today who joined me in studio Miss Stephanie Mejia and Cassie Athena these are amazing ladies follow them on social media at Cassie Athena photo and at underscore (laughs) S-M-E-J-I-A underscore because that's the easiest way to, to get it out there Um, I won't be here for the next two weeks. I'll be traveling to the East Coast, D.C. and New York. But catch us in three weeks. We'll be back. And uh, until then, stay tuned. Thank you guys for watching.